Hi everyone, my name is Ken. Welcome to This House. Today we are touring the historic Campbell House located in St. Louis, Missouri. If you would like to take a tour of this house, you can find the hours and information at the bottom of the screen and in the description. Built uh, in 1851, uh, was part of a multi-block development called the Lucas Place neighborhood. Uh, this was the first home built uh, as the model home, uh, and we are the only remaining home left from this neighborhood. Pretty much everything in this room is original to the Campbell family. Using those three photos of this room, you can quite literally uh, start to match items up. So this would be uh, that you're looking at now. So you match up the gasoliers turned chandelier. You can see in this one here, the ceiling work has been redone above you in the same manner. You can follow the, you know, the sitting chairs, the couches, all the familial artwork is original to the family. Uh, into the house as well. And this is a life-size portrait of Virginia, the shawl that's upstairs on display. It's the same one that her hands are draped and the shawl's kind of rolling over, over the chair. It's an 1855 Schumacher piano. Uh, they acquired that in Philadelphia. Uh, she paid $475 cash uh, for that piano. The large painting is called Linda of Chamonix. It's a famous Swiss um, kind of opera scene, um, quickly depicting a man trying to get back uh, his lover. So these are the same colors uh, that Robert and Virginia would have picked out. And if we slide down the hall this way, you'll see that this portion of the wall was stripped and shaved all the way down. So you can see all the different blocks that were there. And so the pattern starts here and just flows all the way through uh, exactly how Robert and Virginia would have picked it out. And this is a portrait of Robert. He was born in 1804 in Northern Ireland, immigrated to St. Louis in 1823. Between the mid uh, early 1820s to the mid 1830s, he was heavily involved in the fur trade, uh, starting out as a clerk, eventually owning his own fur company. Uh, post fur trade days, he became an entrepreneur. He had steamboats, railways, real estate, and a merchant dry good business with uh, fellow St. Louis and William Sublette. Um, and like I mentioned, with the personal success of Robert, a bit of familial tragedy. Robert and Virginia were married in 1841. They had 13 kids. Only three of those boys survived past the age of eight. Those three boys never married, um, so no kids, no wives, uh, or no heirs came. Uh, from those three kids. The last Campbell son died here in 1938. That led to a series of events that led us to become a museum in 1943. So we've been giving tours like so to the public of St. Louis for just over 76 years. And this was the uh, pet of Hazlet. Her name was Beauty. First to the left on the mantle here, and we only know that is underneath that dome is this plaque. So it highlights February 22nd, 1892 to September 6th, 1902. So presumably those were her death and birth dates. She was a 10 year old bird. She's technically the longest tenured Campbell. Uh, so she's been in this house since 1902. Uh, Victorians at that time too were also, you know, think obsessed with nature. Post Origin of the Species by Charles Darwin, people kind of went nuts uh, for nature. Uh, they didn't necessarily want to get outside you know, roll around and play in the mud and go hiking per se. So that's where you see taxidermy making these nice little nature scenes with, you know, sticks and twigs and leaves, kind of creating a diorama, um, you know, of a faux environment, so to speak, for an animal. 
but 95% of the home content is original to the Campbell family. There were 60 photos taken in 1885. A good example is right, one right here. Uh, we believe the family took these for insurance purposes and it's like a matching game. Uh, obviously that the table's closed up there, but when it's fully extended, uh, the photo all the way on the door to the far left uh, kind of highlights that as well. Uh, between 1999 and 2003, a major restoration work of the home was done to mimic the look of those 1885 photographs. Um, so that's kind of, I think the really unique part is not only are we the last remaining home left from this neighborhood, but the fact that pretty much 95% of what you see uh, is original to the family is pretty, pretty unique for sure. So, and it's, you know, it's been restored in that same manner. Um, just over two years ago, the wallpaper and the ceiling was redone to mimic the uh, close representation as if Robert and Virginia uh, were still here. So here's the butler's pantry. This houses all the family's original uh, china, glass, and silverware. Uh, so to your left would be the collection of silver, uh, most notably the silver cup uh, that's pretty much right at your eye level. Uh, that belonged to Ulysses uh, Grant. Uh, visited this home about four to five times, uh, contemporary with, with Robert. Of course, big fan of whiskey, so we led to believe that those were, uh, we've had mint juleps uh, out of those. And the family's Limoges China is all behind you. Uh, this represents half of the Campbell's original set. It was all made in Limoges, France. Each one has different fruit, vegetable, or nut painted onto them. And then the family's cut glass uh, is right behind me. The door right behind you to the right just simply is a pass through over to the kitchen. And here's their kitchen. So, so no, two notable items, uh, the ice box and stove behind you are both original to the Campbell family. Uh, late 19 teens, early 1920s model. Quick Meal later became Magic Chef. Of course, the Magic Chef mansion still open today over off Russell Boulevard. Uh, that was owned by the Stockstrom family. The bells behind are to my right, are also original to the family, kind of a modern day intercom system. Each bell corresponds with a different room, uh, thus each bell having a different tone or pitch to them. The sink to the far left did have internal running water added in 1855. Keep in mind that water was pumped directly from the Mississippi River, so you're kind of at the mercy of you know, the overall cleanliness of that, but definitely a much, you know, a huge upgrade or amenity, um, so to speak. And these are the servant staircase. It's also original to the family. If you look down to your front right here, of course they did not make that hike. Behind you to your bottom left, you can see two steps and a landing. So the house originally ended right in this doorway here. In the early 1970s, the museum would have added this doorway and then in December of 2020, we completed a capital campaign to add in a new meeting room space here. Below us is our new gift shop and ADA entrance for wheelchair, can you all that sort of stuff. And then we also have a new elevator. Uh, so that's a huge, huge perk and upgrade for us. So here's the back of the Campbell's house, and then we're kind of stepping in to the head cook, cook's bedroom. So this is the cook's bedroom. Uh, so the head cook uh, and that head housekeeper, which we'll, we'll see that room next, of course had a much larger private space. Uh, we think the additional female servants would have been sharing kind of a mutual space, kind of like this on the bed here. Imagine single bed standard about, uh, so not a tremendous amount of privacy. Uh, so certainly being the perk of the head cook and head housekeeper, uh, was you yeah, had your own you know, separate, much larger space. And here's the housekeeper's bedroom. Very comparable setup. That's actually one of the housekeepers there. Uh, Mary Borshti and her other photo is on the bed, right to your left at eye level. Upstairs, we do have a new exhibit where all of the fabrics and textiles and clothes were owned and used by the Campbells. And then we're stepping into Lucy Kyle's bedroom. So this was Virginia's mother's room, or Robert's mother-in-law. 
She moved in in 1856 and died in this home in 1883. In a bit of irony, she outlived both Robert and Virginia, uh, but she had a lovely setup. This was originally two servants' rooms combined into one room. Uh, she's got practically floor to ceiling windows, shutters on both sides, kind of deflect the heat, keep some of the coolness on the inside in theory. So now we're walking up to the master bedrooms. So we think Robert and Virginia would have shared the side that I'm standing on. And then toward the end of her uh, married life, we think Robert took over this side on my left. And then Virginia still took up residence here on the right hand side. Definitely one of our more glamorous rooms uh, for sure. Carpets, wallpaper, the ceiling medallions, even though she's got a little bit fancier rendition, but the woodwork in this room is, is exceptional. This bird's a bird of paradise, and then another bird of paradise is on the far left. We think those were already acquired, deceased, and stuffed in uh, the tax room process already complete. This is also the widest point of the house. So it's a classic shotgun style home. Very, very narrow, but as we just, it runs, you know, literally almost the whole depth of the lot. So this would be the family's library or an informal living room space. Built-in bookshelves would definitely indicate uh, being called a library. But if you look behind you up a half level of stairs, there's two kids room and that open door is a nanny's room. Those are now converted to our offices, but those used to be the children's space, which is partially why I say a little bit of a family parlor because I would envision mom and dad and the kids being able to hang out here versus always going to the very formal parlor. The photos that you're panning through in the grandfather clock to the left and right are copies of their travel album. Those are from Egypt and Istanbul uh, from the early 1880s. The grandfather clock uh, comes from the Skull and Bone Society. Of course, you know that East Coast secret fraternal group. So James Campbell, he was born in 1860 and died in 1890 at the age of 30 in Paris from the flu. He was by far the Campbell's most educated son, having went to both Yale and then Harvard Law School. During his time at Yale, he was a member of the Skull and Bone Society. He's the first to the right of the grandfather clock there. It's been long time rumored that when you graduate that group and move on your senior year and post-graduation, you're given a grandfather clock. Uh, we would definitely believe in that, that rumor because we have the photos of his apartment at Yale and you can vividly see uh, the same clock. Thank you all for watching. I would like to give a huge shout out to Michael for narrating this tour and for allowing us to film here. If you would like to visit this house, please visit the link in the description. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Remember to let us know which room was your favorite down in the comment section. I'll see you next time on This House.